Great. Uh, next up, we have Regrow and Ron Musin from Cultivian is going to briefly introduce them. Go ahead, Ron. Oh, thanks, Nick. It's my pleasure to introduce Anastasia Volkova, who is the founder and CEO of Regrow Ag. Very briefly, I, I'll say, you know, as a, we looked at Regrow, um, they look like a company that started in the precision ag field for using various databases, satellite imagery, drone imagery, uh, weather data, soil data, et cetera, to help put both farming and agronomy and agronomic services of the input providers onto a more of a, a modern precision ag kind of basis. But lately they have gone, and, and that's a crowded area, although they've been a, clearly a leader in that attracting some big partnerships. But more recently, they've gone into some two new areas that are emerging as in importance, but, but technically very difficult to crack, I think. Um, and so they're kind of at the front end of that. One, one is tracking and guiding growers on regenerative agricultural practices to re restore the soil, et cetera, which gets to be a lot, I think it's a lot tougher than, than just telling them how to get an extra five bushels on their corn. And then more recently into carbon markets, which you know, again is, is a technically a great challenge but an increasingly important area. So with, with that, I will turn it over to Anastasia to either correct my, inter my introduction or expand on it. No, Ron, that was perfect. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for the kind introduction. And uh, hello to everyone who does know me and who hasn't met me yet. Uh, I see it's 50-50 today on the call. Uh, so I'm excited to give everyone an update if you haven't seen me in the last uh, half a year, or even if you've seen me and you're starting to get interested in doing something together, um, it'll be a great opportunity to give you more meat on the bone. Um, so as Ron was saying, um, Regrow is a company that formed out of um, Florissat acquiring Dagan, and I'll kind of debrief you on that in the moment. But really what we're looking holistically at doing is unlocking the profit potential of resilient agriculture, whether that means from efficiencies in precision ag space or from additional opportunities in ecosystem service markets. The idea is that if you do the right thing by the land, if your agronomy is dialed in and right, there's a number of opportunities for you to reduce costs, make more money, and actually nowadays get rewarded for doing the right thing by the environment, which is extremely exciting for someone who's been working on nailing down the nitrogen management in crops for the last four years. Um, so a little bit on my background um, and uh, the co-founder of the business, um, Bill Salas is not with me today, but uh, you can of course uh, look him up at us on LinkedIn. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I founded uh, Florisat and Ron gave you the background and Bill was the founder of Dagan. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the story, we're directing people to this Future of Agriculture podcast, maybe four episodes ago. It's a really great, relatively short way to get to learn us better. And we're just an incumbent there. It's a really good conversation with Tim Hemorrhage. In terms of the background of the um, problem that we're solving, of course, you're aware why everyone is trying to fix the problem with climate change because the earth is heating up. But I think the larger problem that people are not seeing is that because of the way we are managing the ground, billions of tons of soil are being destroyed, washed away, blown away. And that causes a lot of productivity issues. And ultimately, it's just a massive cost on the industry. On the other hand, we see solutions emerge around the ecosystem service markets. And this is predominantly what I'll be talking about today. Not to say that we don't do any agronomy anymore, but agronomy is the driving force behind making better decisions in favor of sustainability. You can't have a sustainable management decision of a crop or a land without it being an agronomic decision. So what about the opportunity here? If you get those decisions right around managing your soil, your residue, you get your carbon, uh, carbon and nitrogen right, and your phosphorus, and you can see that Noble Research Institute estimated that together this market is a $14 billion market in the US alone. And this is actually a public report you can uh, find. Um, and it's uh, 
estimating basically a volume of um, credits that will be traded in the US market. Um, and if my presentation will be available to you afterwards, uh, I inserted a link at the bottom to it. Well, what is the problem with uh, ecosystem markets? Can't we just get it all done and get on with it and pay farmers for soil carbon very easily? Well, not so easily <laughs> because we have a challenge with quantifying what those outcomes are. As Ron mentioned, technically or scientifically, it's a challenging thing to really wrap your hands around. And there is various models of um, estimating soil carbon. Um, and if you're just going to go out and take soil cores, this is going to be very expensive on the time and labor and the cost of actually doing this dry combustion, which means that the transaction cost is very high. And if you want to do the verification, the fact that the farmer has done the practice, indeed the carbon was sequestered, let's go and verify that's the case, you need to repeat the same procedure again. So what is the overarching challenge here? It doesn't scale if you have humans and labs and uh, millions of dollars locked in, not in payments for farmers, but actually in just estimating how much they sequestered. So we see that this monitoring, reporting and verification technologies need to advance, need to adapt to the modern world scenarios. And this is where We've seen an opportunity to merge the two businesses. So Foresight acquired Dagan and we together formed Regrow as a company with a broader mandate. So a brief description that Ron has given you is pretty perfect, but I would just double click and say that at Foresight, we developed a very large and scalable agronomic data platform connected to all major firm management systems via API gathering a lot of data from all possible sources, from radar, optical satellites, all the way to machinery and IoT. But the core of that platform really is crop modeling and decision support. So keyword here is agronomy and large platform. Um, Dagan has developed um, amazing models that they're a um, sole exclusive commercial custodian of uh, for soil and environmental modeling. And they're a go-to player for, they were a go-to player for a number of um, project developers and markets in the US to really underpin the development of these markets with scalable modeling and remote sensing based technologies. So we believe that Regrow is really poised to be the number one platform for rigorous, low cost and scalable monitoring, reporting and verification. Now, what about our scale? Like, yes, we have merged the companies earlier this year, but we're pretty mature. Both of us were pretty mature. And so coming together means that we monitor more than 150 million acres. People always ask me, what do you mean by monitor? What this means is that to run support for a carbon market or a large scale ecosystem service um, project, we actually map all the fields. So we don't just grab some of the fields from farm management systems. We look at the entire wheat belt at the moment and we map all of them. By the end of the year, we will have the entire US worth of products worth of identification of the regenerative practices adoption and the outcomes associated with them. Um, on the other hand, the fluorescence platform brought by Fluorescent is already used in 45 countries. Our sustainability offering in carbon is mostly focused on the US. This is our short-term focus, but our agronomy offering is available globally. It's a great data collection tool and learning tool for us, as well as an exchange we give decision support to our global customers. Um, that's how we get to all these countries, through a handful of global customers. Finally, um, we actually go deep historically. This is really important if you're looking at um, either investing in a piece of land or even qualifying the farmer as to eligibility to a certain carbon market. You need to test historical practices, and this is something we can easily we support. Um, those of you who have uh, heard from me recently saw slightly different numbers here. We recently hired another 10 people. Uh, so we're now 50 and 13 of us are PhDs. We do have presence in five countries with our team. Majority, so 30 is US, about 10 is Australia, and a few more in Eastern Europe, in France, South Africa, and Brazil, just outposts. In terms of our investors, Microsoft has co-led our C2 round, which was July 2019. And we have other amazing investors like Silicon Valley based Costa Noah, uh, CSIRO's um, Australian Science Agency, um, Venture R Made Sequence Ventures, um, Space Angels, the Space Capital. Um, I'm sure some of you recognize these logos. 
Um, in terms of um, what I would like to present to you quickly, in terms of our product, since the previous presentation ran over time, I want to help us catch up on some time. Um, so we break our product down. It's across the same platform, but we effectively put them into three buckets, three modules that the customers can buy. And if you um, think of what you're looking at here, you're really looking at the SaaS offering with annual pricing of X dollars per hectare. And for each of these modules, there is granularity of like what are specific things you can opt in into. Um, and there's variable pricing for them as well. So agronomy is a, um, is a product that comes out of Florisad, but it's definitely geared towards making decisions in a good way for the environment. So it's very compatible with our kind of more clear sustainability focus. It's mostly geared, to, geared towards retailers, advisors, and people who are dealing with farmers' data. Sustainability uh, is a product geared towards CPG customers. Um, we have uh, some of the CPG customers already, and our traction with them is growing. Again, this is underpinning what is the regenerative agriculture adoption? Can you track um, the adoption and actually demonstrate based on your large commitments, how does that translate? Finally, the carbon module is really something that calculates the outcomes of the ecosystem. So like again, carbon sequestration, nitrous oxide flux, um, and that leads us into the water quality that we're developing right now. So we're looking to be effectively a one-stop shop platform for making decisions around agronomy that lead to better outcomes. And we do think of carbon as a, as a crop that you can invest in and get the payments from. In terms of the IP, we of course can, can cover that, but I'm anxious to give you a bit of a perspective of these are all our integrations with farm management system platforms. And it's really wonderful how they are now serving the answers to our larger ecosystem service effort because you cannot have validation of um, the data required to estimate the soil organic carbon through our models if you are not actually collecting the farm management system data. Now, in terms of the markets we are already supporting and have really strong relationships with, it's these three leaders in the US market, System Service Market Consortium, for those of you who might not be familiar, they are actually a consortium of 70 brands, including PepsiCo, McDonald's, and Cargo is also there, um, General Mills, Danon, and others. We're also in active discussions with um, kind of the next, next year um, project developers. And so for, um, some of these you will be seeing the announcements over the coming weeks. Um, to give you an understanding of who we serve, we actually serve businesses across the supply chain. And whilst um, Florisat was serving the businesses mostly in the front of the supply chain, and Dakin was serving the businesses towards the end of the supply chain, we now have it all kind of nicely intermixed and developing more and more into the consumer downstream uh, section of the, of the supply chain. Um, Brief overview and we'll transition to questions because it's much more interesting to hear you ask questions than me talking. Um, so those of you who've recently talked to me know that we are currently in uh, uh, a capital raising stage. Uh, we are looking at a bit of a uh, kind of flexible round, but it's upwards of $15 million. We're calling it Series A, but since the merger cap table looks more like a Series B, if we shed those definitions, what we're really looking at is um, potentially one, one check from a partner that really can help us de-risk the um, rollout of the platform to all of these large acres. I'm happy to give you more information on the uh, use of the proceeds or any other questions that you might have. I think one question that I omitted that no doubt that you will ask, and I'll just shortcut that, our current revenue, we're projected to make between five and seven million uh, dollars this year. Uh, we have at least $3 million already in the bank this year um, out of that revenue. And next year, we're looking at doubling that. So just to give you some numbers and please open it up for questions. Great. Well, thank you so much, Anastasia. And as you say, uh, let's open up for questions. Let's get right into it. About four or five more minutes before we hop on to the next one. Anyone feel free to just jump in. This is an open forum.
do not be shy. I'm sure there's some out there with questions. Hi, this is Anna. Maybe I'll um, ask a question here quickly on just maybe you can give a breakdown roughly of the revenue. Um, you know, what are the customers actually buying? Is it data? Is it the carbon credits? Can you just elaborate a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Anna, for that question. So the customers are buying data licenses and platform subscriptions. So for example, if you are um, a customer that has a carbon project development um, effort going on, like one of those three logos at the top that I shared, um, you will be buying regrows ability to effectively check eligibility of your farmers, um, quantify what the potential outcomes of them transitioning to new practices, come back and verify that and help you through that program on that acre over time. So it's an annual subscription. It's a platform plus data because the data products allow us to make decisions and the platform is what actually implements the different protocols. If by this protocol, you should have these thresholds, then we will calculate the data with those thresholds. I hope it makes sense. Thanks. Anyone else? Thanks. Going once. Well, the, the nice thing about having this all online is that we can- Oh, we can Nick, I yeah, actually have two questions in the chat. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sure. There's two so, questions uh, from yeah. Rob. Um, when do you plan to have the manure DNDC and water quality modules done? We are planning to have them done next year. We are currently uh, really busy underpinning efforts, multi-million acre efforts of rolling out some of the programs that our partners have committed to. And that's around soil organic carbon, uh, nitrous oxide, and nitrous oxide, it's already a lead into the water quality. So we're starting to um, kind of advance into the water quality there. And in terms of manure, we already have small pilots on it, but in terms of the larger availability, it will be next year, probably Q3 is what we're currently planning. And um, Anna also asked the previous question, um, how do you analyze the fields and what data you're looking for? So the beauty of the system is that this is hands-free. So you don't need to enroll a field from a farm management system as a CPG or as a market developer. You basically point it at an area. You say, I want to analyze all the fields in this area. And we usually already have products for majority of the um, cropping areas in the United States. And by the end of the year, we'll have the grazing. But the data is satellite imagery, soil type, elevation, um, and uh, weather data based on which we agronomically analyze it. We see patterns and they say, and then we say, well, here's what we're seeing. This is a crop type rotation year by year. Here is how it, the tillage was year by year. And this is the use of cover crops. And we have 90% accuracy of that. We collect extensive data sets ourselves um, to validate what we're saying. Because for example, for sustainability data, it's used for USDA greenhouse gas inventory and by many NGOs and, and uh, state organizations, conservation to make decisions on the policy level. So we actually have our products validated. Um, and in terms of DNDC, there is a number of peer reviewed studies that we're happy to share as to how it was validated. Um, but it's also something that I guess um, we're quite confident in given, given all the uh, data sets that, that we have for it and validation we've done. Great. Any final can, I, can I ask a, a quick question here as well on carbon markets? What is the sort of regulatory status in the U.S. today, and is there ability, you know, to sell them? And just maybe um, walk through a little bit this. Absolutely. So, like, is there ability to transact um, on, on on carbon today? So, currently, the situation is that. Um, you have not so much hard regulatory landscape like USDA. We've talked with them recently, and basically their position is that they will put some guardrails into the system so that you actually have to have some things that regrow has, like you have to have model uncertainty, and you need to have some parameters to your system that demonstrate that you're legitimately able to quantify it. Now, Anna, to your question um, as to what's the kind of the next layer leg regulatory, there is Climate Action Reserve Protocol and VERA Protocol, and actually SMC has their own. These are regulators that say, this is our kind of protocol by which you should be estimating the carbon credits, and this is how we will check it. 
So we are actually in the final stages of approval by CAR. So our tech will be approved by CAR very soon. We've submitted a, uh, a report just to give you an idea of how much it takes to get that approval. We've submitted a report that is a result of nine months of work building automated calibration validation system and collecting 1500 peer reviewed study site points to demonstrate that like our tech is, is accurate and we know what to expect from it. So that's currently the regulatory landscape. You need to go through that stringent process to get the stamp of approval from one of these protocols. And yes, indeed, you can transact carbon credits this year in the US. A lot of people are, are starting these things up. Um, it's currently on a smaller kind of out of all the potential it's a couple of million acres max. Some people are starting under half a million acres um, and you need to register it project by project. Whilst in the next year, we're looking at just having Rego platform registered. And then all of our partners um, by virtue of that being the case, will get the benefit of their projects being allowed to, to transact by those protocols. 